inside. Some things have been happening that might be related. We're in a race against the Nazis. So cool. Are we saying there's a chance that when we push that button, we destroy the world? I'm actually not sure. All America's industrial might and scientific innovation connected here. We've got one hope. What do I have to do? I know what it means if the Nazis have a bomb. Catastrophic! Well, remember this day. Okay. Detonator charge. The world is not prepared. Just a giant blowout. How could you possibly know that? You are the man who gave them the power to destroy themselves. Do you guys ever think about dying? <laughs> Hello, <laughs> and welcome to the Periodic Table of Awesome. I adore that trailer. That's oh. so good. <laughs> oh, hi, Oppie. Oh, hi, Oppie. Oh, hi, oh, hi Barbie. <laughs> um, now, to do this in order. Oh, hi, Dion. Oh, hi, Quinny. Oh, hi, Jill. Hi, Ken. <laughs> and hi, Industry Barbie. Hi, Ken. Ah, oh, excellent. <laughs> now I, I feel so much better. We have, uh, I don't know, do we, Do you feel like we've maybe played our hand a little early as to how we feel about this week? <laughs> um, maybe, but we're doing it a bit of a, a different way. I'm currently on holiday in the mountains. I'm having a respite, uh, <laughs> which is why I do look like I've, I've come from the set of Oppenheimer. Uh, <laughs> you you are wearing know. quite a nice, uh, I don't know, I'm wearing cardigan. Brown cardigan. Yes, yes. Yeah. Like, and that's only funny because I, like, if anyone knows the website Brown Cardigan. Um, <laughs> I don't Very know. circle 40s. Love it. Yes, <laughs> yes. That's all right. That's what I'm doing. I'm covered as the Oppenheimer fanboy. I'm the Oppen stan for this oh, one. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, then and yeah, I, have, if... I have a lot of opinions about the, uh, the uh, Justice League uh, Snyder <laughs> Cut. <laughs> 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 I'm sure you've got a lot of opinions on a lot of things and you probably post them very loudly on X. It's not Twitter anymore. <laughs> X going to give it to you? No, no. No, you're going to pay for it. X yeah. is not going to give it to you. You're going to pay and pay and pay. Oh, no. X going to charge it to you? We've <laughs> exactly. all been paying. Oh, oh dear. Yeah. Yes, if there's someone who is serving correctly this evening, it would be a stereotypical Jill. Yes. Um, <laughs> Yeah, it's wonderful. Um, yeah, like Jill, I, I hate to say this, but you you are the best Barbie that has ever Barbied ever Barbie Barbie Barbie. Well, Barbie. thank you. Um, <laughs> in industry Barbie, you are the industry. She is the greatest Barbie. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I have gone to zero effort and just look like I look all the time. I don't know. You you, you look that, amazing. But that's um, what industry Barbie is. Yeah, industry Barbie's getting it done. <laughs> Industry Barbie. Barbie is actually making this shit work. <laughs> yes. yes that's um, and uh, Ken Dion, um, which yeah. now all I can think of you as being Ken Doran, spelt wrong. Um, <laughs> no, I'm I'm Ken with Dion action. <laughs> well, <laughs> yes. Um, what are we? Well, what are we doing tonight? We're doing a double feature. Yes, special we, uh, 1950s drive-in style double feature. <laughs> um, we are going to talk about a movie that's a bit of a bomb and then a movie that's about a toy yeah how's that there you go that's a dad joke with a cardigan Fuck i it. liked it it was good <laughs> it was very impressive so of uh, course yeah. like honestly the single biggest discussion in cinema for the past you know month basically has been this combination and mm. you know what i'm, I'm not too yeah. proud to jump on the fucking bandwagon i'm i'm down for a bit of bandwagon jumping yeah why not? Why can't people can enjoy? People are allowed to enjoy, enjoy things, yes. and I also like that things come up through this, which will be you know, a whole point is made about that in one of these movies is that people are allowed to enjoy things. It's okay, you don't have to shit on everything. Yeah, yes. and I think that's, that's that's a very healthy thing to. to... I feel like the marketing came as the positivity throughout the whole thing. It's like we're going to make uh, Oppenheimer and Barbie the same thing. And everyone's like, wait, no, you can't. And it's like, sure, why not? I can, because it's fucking Barbie. We've got nothing to lose. We can do whatever the fuck we want yeah. because Barbie. And um, yeah. and Oppenheimer sits in this really weird sort of thing of like, I, I just adore the juxtaposition of it. And I think that's what people have latched onto is going, mm -hmm. it's this super serious biopic about a man who 
ended the lives of literally hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people, and Barbie. Sure. And I enjoy well, that. I enjoy the... Serious, a super serious Christopher Nolan auteur work. <laughs> yeah. That is, is perfectly matched with the candy fairy floss, but also more existential dread than is present <laughs> in Oppenheimer that I've got there, to say. There was significantly more existentialism than I was pre- expecting or prepared for. If someone if someone were to come out of this uh, like years ago or months ago and just go on, you're going to watch two films in the next week. One is a Nolan film and the other one is a film about a toy. You're, you're going to feel a little bit more connected to the one about a toy. I would have been like, come on, what? what yeah. Yeah. Let's go. Another way we could categorise this week is we saw a movie that Peter was super excited to see and a movie that Peter was super unexcited to see. <laughs> <laughs> a movie that, was, that we forced Peter to see who just yes. categorically did not want to go and see it. And yeah. Like, yeah. Fine, hey, I'll go and see it. We were yeah. given a, a lovely free ticket from uh, yes, Universal I'd... or whatever and so, I mean... Mm-hmm. We, we offered and Peter accepted. I do really appreciate the, the tickets, but, uh, yeah, not a normal girl. Not a, not a person with any interest in Oppenheimer as a personality. So these two things just made that, that movie not, it was not on my 2023 must-see list. Yeah, I mean, I feel in two minds about Oppenheimer because I do enjoy Nolan films, but at the mm. same time the, uh, the war crimes that happened in that movie are so atrocious yeah. and how how do you glorify a scientist where that is making like amazing progression in terms of discovery and all sorts of stuff like that but at the cost of what you know yeah at the cost of his humanity and lives and the the stability of Which- the free world which is a funny way but to say. I'm not sure about glorification is the right word on that one, but um, we need. I think we need to sit, sit back and go. All right, how are we going to do this one tonight? Because this is going to be a separate, a different, slightly different format. Not like our oh, regular yeah. one where we Strap talk in about for it. For a like... three-hour-long podcast, every <laughs> <day>. <laughs> it's going to get weird. No, well, we're going to have to like we'll have to do part and part. I, I have a, I have a, a synopsis for that, that combines both beautifully. Oh. Excellent. Do you have some music for yourself? And 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 I I want an accent, please. <laughs> Can I put a vote in right now for the accent? Uh, sure. What? Okay. Yeah. Cool. Uh, let's, let's let's see those shit accents in the chat. I want you to do Sugar Daddy. <gasps> Sugar Daddy Ken. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> Little man in a, in a box. Uh, <laughs> it was Rob Brydon, wasn't it? I know yes. it's Rob Brydon, but it's also Sugar Daddy because he's <laughs> Sugar's daddy. Hello, yeah. I'm yes, sugar, this is I'm Sugar. Daddy. I'm your daddy. Yes. <laughs> okay, I, I, I've got some appropriate music that I think will go with this. Um, oh dear. Baby act up. <laughs> <laughs> During World War II, Lieutenant General Leslie Groves Jr. appoints physicist J. Robert Oppenheimer to work on the top secret Manhattan Project. Oppenheimer and a team of scientists spend years developing and designing the atomic bomb. Meanwhile, Barbie and Ken are having the time of their lives in the colorful and seemingly perfect world of Barbie Land. The nuclear scientist's work continues to come to fruition on July 16, 1945, as they witness the first nuclear explosion forever changing the course of history and giving Barbie and Ken a chance to go see the real world. They soon discover the joys and perils of living amongst humans in an irradiated wasteland. I want to push you ever. Oh, dear. Uh, If someone had explained to me, too, that I would fall back in love, love is a strong word, but with uh, Matchbox 20, and Rob Thomas, uh, I would have also said, you're on drugs. What, what are you yeah. doing about this? Like, this that is- song is and- so great. Did you write it, Quinny? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Here, let me play it for you. Sorry, let me play it at you on my guitar. <laughs> yeah, and stare unflinchingly into my eyes oh. for four hours. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Can you tell oh, which one of these films we enjoyed? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Oppenheimer's just not quotable, is it? <laughs> no, 
No, it's not. Yeah. Um, I mean, there's definitely some disturbing scenes in there that I want to talk about in Oppenheimer, but in terms of quoting what was going on, I still don't know exactly what happened in Barbie, and I don't <laughs> think I can ever really actually explain it to people. Oppenheimer is very fine. It's like, yeah, there's a bomb, and they have to make it, and it's all about him, and all I learned was that fucking Oppenheimer fucks. Um, <laughs> and then yeah. there's Bobby. Yeah. Anyway. Oh. Um, Adski has pointed out to us that Matchbox 20s are touring uh, a new <laughs> this year. So um, that, that's a big boost for them. Um, yeah. C- cool. Okay. So structurally, I think what <laughs> Preda Kanga just said, I can't do Welsh. Fuck you, buddy. I was in fucking under Milkwood. Um, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yeah, all of them. Every under Milkwood performance ever yep. is Quinny is in that. Yes, I am. That's true. <laughs> um, okay, so we we are going to uh, be starting with Oppenheimer um, mm-hmm. because, as as many discussed, what was the correct way to watch the Barbenheimer duo? Dion. Dion. Oh uh, well, I mean the, the the original way to watch it was to get up at, uh, uh, at first thing in the morning, have a, a black coffee and a cigarette go to the 11 a.m. Oppenheimer screening, come out of the Oppenheimer screaming, screaming, uh, screaming. Well, <laughs> Freudian slip then, of their voice. Yep. And then, you know, then go to a mimosa brunch uh, and then go to Barbie and then go clubbing till 3 a.m. That was how we, we should all do Did we all do that? I did it. I did it that way. I mean, where did no, you find no, serving in a mimosa <laughs> brunch at 2.30 p.m.? Yeah, exactly. You know what? It's... I went to Barbie land where they serve mimosa brunch all the time. And I drink it like this. (laughs) I'm having a mimosa brunch now. Mm. Mm. Yummy Um, mimosas. Yes. Okay. um, So shall shall we shall we look a little deeper into the Christopher Nolan um, three hour five minute epic that is Oppenheimer. Oppenheimer. Mm. Yes, and we're gonna like we're gonna be spoiling both of them straight away. So I'm gonna say, if you haven't seen Oppenheimer, listen to our review first, and then decide if you want to see it because it's kind of like Titanic. You know, everyone's anyone surprised by the fact that the Titanic goes and and gets sunk? Sorry, but that's yeah, what it, it is. because Oppenheimer is a semi historical look at a person's life, so you can't really spoil that. So therefore, we're just going to talk about the movie. Yeah. I mean, Whereas Barbie is like, if you haven't seen Barbie, I would, but not one hundred percent, but be like, I'm pretty seventy five percent sure should go and see it before listening to our review of it, and then come back and tell us. Yeah, if we, were wrong. But we might like, we might like give you like a five minute what we thought of it, and then sure. you can duck yeah. out because it's like so unfun to have somebody tell you the plot points or something like that. You just yeah. have to experience it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay, so Oppenheimer. Mm. Um, here we are back in the realm of uh, Christopher Nolan um, being serious, being um, good friends with Killian Murphy and saying, I've got this film that I want you to do. Um, and it's going to be about a very, very important character in American history. And it's going to go forever. The film is going to go forever, Killian. Um, but we're only going to shoot it for 58 days, which is fucking insane. Holy shit. Um, yeah. They yeah. left nothing out. <laughs> no, yeah, everything they shot, it's on there because I cannot within, wrap my head around that. Within two months, and also there were no VFX. Okay, so well, this is a load of shit. Yeah, there were a fuckload uh-huh. of VFX. Yes. Um, yes. But also, you know, there were no action sequences. or Like, this is a very, like, people talking on screen. Uh, so I can see why the um, production schedule might have been more compact than other production schedules. Uh, yeah, sure. And I, yeah, so that that whole no VFX thing has been much touted, as you said, uh, Peter. It's a load of shit. There were VFX, um, and in fact, VFX in the sense of visual effects, yeah, but not CGI, no computer generated. But he knows what he's doing when he says that bullshit. Like (laughs) he knows exactly what he's doing, and he knows what he's doing when he doesn't credit the VFX department. He yeah. wants to make it seem like there were not the effects. Yeah. yeah. Well, and that's not the, the only uh, call out I'm going to make on Nolan with not crediting for his yeah. films. So yeah. So we'll get um, to that apparently, 
there were there were only 27 VFX people credited for the entire film. So whilst there were supposedly no CGI, there were there were there was a lot of background replacement and scene extension and stuff like that that they didn't want to credit because they wanted it to appear to be full, you know, um, so traditional crazy. filmmaking. And all of the special effects of the explosions and everything were done 100% in camera. Yeah, I mean, That's... VFX is traditional filmmaking. You know, we've yeah. had green screens for decades. <laughs> like Exactly. Nothing to be ashamed of. It's how we make a film. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And and just because you want to be seen as being this auto fucking you know artisan filmmaker, it doesn't mean you pull out the fucking credits. Like no. that's the thing that shits me. Like you know, credit the people who did the work, even if you any anyway. So no, it's it's a fair cop, and also. Um... It's it's a strange thing that people will immediately go, oh, Christopher Nolan's making an Oppenheimer film. Like, oh, that's going to be amazing already. It's like, how? How do you know this? He's not. The and here's my of thing the world. with Nolan. Here's yeah. my thing with like, and like, I'm not not to say that he's not a master director. Uh, I just like there's a cult, and I hate it when there's a cult because I'm like, so you think that like it's super clever because you were confused, but. <laughs> if you're confused, it's likely to be poor storytelling than super clever. Really. Yeah, or because you got it, but you don't think anyone else did, and therefore you have a sense of superiority to the rest of the audience. Um, no, because... you're pretending to get it. The storytelling mm. is deliberately confusing. I, like... I never finished Tenet. I, I started it and never finished what? it. I actually still haven't watched it. Um. I was like, it was in the middle of lockdown and I it, I found mm -hmm. it and I was like, oh, I should watch that. I started watching it and I'm like, <sighs> can, you just, fucked. can you just please all watch it in 20 minute long pieces on your phone on the way to and from work like he intended, <laughs> <laughs> like Christopher Nolan intended. <laughs> watch it on your phones, people. Yeah. Like the, only thing, the only thing that got me through Tenet was a commitment to Robert Pattinson. And that's like saying a lot because I'm not exactly a Patton fan. But I was like, you know what? Like he's doing his best. I'm gonna like stick with this. I was just mm. disappointed he didn't he didn't glitter in the sun uh, during that film. Anyway, this is the yeah. skin of a monster, Bella. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been quite good. But, sorry, to, to come back to Oppenheimer, Oppenheimer is uh, Nolan's uh, first R-rated film since Ooh la la. Uh, mm. since uh, Insomnia. Um, I like Insomnia. And, and I got to tell you. Uh, if R, if an R rating is given to things that make you sort of uncomfortable, Oppenheimer definitely made me uncomfortable during a very specific scene. Yeah, I was supposed to be uncomfortable in the definitely opposite uncomfortable. Oh no. no, not even that one. No, not even not, that one. Was there a no. more uncomfortable scene in this film, Dion? Tell me. There was. This, there this was. is sarcasm. It's sarcasm yeah. because there shouldn't be a more uncomfortable scene than the one that everyone dies, but somehow. Okay, it but exists. even that wasn't uncomfortable enough. Yeah, exactly. no, absolutely. Are, are you yeah, going to bring I mean, up the thing? I think you're going to bring up, I, Jill. I just, I want to. Yes. Yes. I want to. I just want to get back to, and I won't talk about that scene. I'll leave that, Jill. Jill, you can have that on. You go right That's ahead and, and talk about it. But I was going to say, like, I went in and I was expecting a very long movie about a very big bomb that goes off. And mm -hmm. after a while, I was just kind of like, I, why am I getting all of this backstory to this person? I don't really give a shit, and I like some of the science references that came mm -hmm. along with it. You know, which was just like, oh my god, it's you know Niels Bohr. Like, you know, I know these, I remember all these things from physics textbooks and stuff. I was like, oh, this is kind of cool, and it's nice to see. And oh, there's Matt Damon. You know, it's <laughs> kind of fun. But what I wasn't expecting was a bunch of the whole kind of like, why are we focusing on a lot of the stuff around Oppenheimer and not the yes. stuff that that to, to was fair, literally around Oppenheimer? Yeah, mm. I mean, okay, so it was based on the book of his life. So, yeah. I mean, fair enough. And the movie's got his fucking name on it. So, of course, mm. it's going to be a story about him. I'm so torn on this movie because I do enjoy exploring science and and the, the leaps and bounds that it makes. And so much happened in the 40s. But unfortunately, it was at the cost of, you know, slaughtering hundreds of thousands of people yeah. and going on to 
leave lasting impressions on a landscape and a people, not just uh, in Japan, but in America as well. And I want to acknowledge the Mescalero Apache people of New Mexico that were never uh, spoken about in this movie, as well as the local Hispanic people. They were all forced out of Los Alamos. It wasn't a barren town. It was fucking, they were cleared out. And then the locals that were nearby were not told that an an atomic bomb was going to be dropped. They just thought they were, you know, testing explosives. And so all the fallout that happened that blew with the the blast radius has caused um, livestock deformities for uh, decades. It's given people rare cancers for decades. Um, Nobody was told... (laughs) that uh, an atomic bomb went off. So they all came in the next day and had a picnic on the blast site and were picking up the um, uh, trinitite, which is the radioactive glass that was formed after the bomb blast and taking it home as souvenirs. And so everybody was radiated, like, poisoned afterwards. And and, one more thing, Radiation Exposure Compensation Act that is uh, enacted in um, American legislation Uh, Between the years 1945 and 1962, anybody that was um, affected with health conditions uh, that were as a result of any nuclear testing that happened in America can get reparations, except for anybody in New Mexico. Oh, motherfuckers. Yeah. So an- another That's little side side point to that, um, the Hispanic people who were removed from that were also employed back in yes. Los Alamos. They but... were uh, taken to the uranium mines and the beryllium mines and they were not given PPE to work with. Yeah. So fuck the people <laughs> that, that this is about. Yeah. Like, fuck every it's... single one of them because yeah. all the white people got PPP, PPE to work with but not the Hispanic locals. Yeah. Which is one of those things you go like, okay, we're telling a version of history here. Exactly. But fuck that. Yeah. And another interest- Nolan is an auto director. <laughs> 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 the other thing that also somebody brought up, and, and I realized at the time how much it fucking it, it resonated with me. In one of the sequences where after the dr- the bomb has been dropped, and you know, we, we're seeing the effect that it's having on Oppenheimer. He mm. fronts the whole town and they're all applauding and stuff like that. And then he sees them being blown apart by a blast. Yet we never see a single Japanese person. So no. the only way that they could make us care about these people was to make white people blow apart. And I went, oh, Jesus. Yeah, it was definitely like a metaphorical scene, but uh, I just did not feel any emotional connection to his guilt about uh, creating the bomb. Like, it was just such an afterthought and just a, oh, we'll just put this little thing in here, but we don't want to be too graphic with it because, oh. And I'm like, excuse mm. me, but Hiroshima has a museum that's in a building that was destroyed by the fucking bomb and it documents every goddamn thing that happened to the people in that city and all of the disgusting deformities and cancers and mutations and appalling things that happened to the victims. And I'm like, that's some shit that they're never going to let go. Hmm. And, it was, and you can't it was even give it the time of day in the movie. Yeah, it was an interesting thing to focus on the internal struggle that they presented with Oppenheimer in, like, you know, in this thing is he kind of he knew what was going on with it and that was the thing that was tormenting him and why he was fighting against it after a while. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but, like, yeah, there's a whole other thing out there of going, like, yeah, but you could have actually explained what, what you could, that horror could easily have been replicated by actually showing some stuff. Yeah. You know? And yeah. to, to, to provide the reasoning as to why he was so conflicted after he'd done it and to give him that kind of pathos might have been done with a defter hand. But no, it was just more like, uh, it's, 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 it's science. Science stuff and science is, scientists are warning you about science stuff and you should listen to science things and, and yeah. stop stop yeah. doing that. I mean, yeah. the political aftermath, that really shit me as well because I'm like, it's, it's so typical of government structures to just completely fuck over people that do something for them but they want to wipe their hands clean, you know. Yeah. So, yeah, the, yeah, the yeah. utter vilification that he went through afterwards was bad but not as bad as what they did to the Japanese people. 
yeah. and the science, the rest of the scientific team. Yeah. 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 And fr from a filmmaking perspective, I had problems <laughs> with the, the the fact that it felt like there was just a whole bunch of people who I vaguely knew um, <laughs> walking into rooms and being um, very fast talking but serious. Like so, I and I in a film like this, you have to have big name actors. I get that, but I couldn't help to... but feel. Well, I, I don't know. I couldn't I mean, help a but feel. Story that, can still be told. Yeah, that I was seeing. Ah, oh, there's that actor. Oh, there's that actor. Oh, that's Josh Hartnett. Oh, that's you know that that's yes. yeah you know <laughs> that's a whole bunch of people. And I spent way too long trying to work out who the lawyer guy is and who's that other guy. And I was like, I was focusing on who the are lawyer they guy as was actors. John Connor. Quinny. Oh no, I knew he was shit John Connor from the shit movie. No. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> John Connor um, from Genesis. So no, no, yes, no. Genesis. Like, uh, what's his name? Robert Downey Jr.'s uh, attendant, aid guy. It's Han Solo. Solo. It's Han Solo. That's who it is. Fuck me. <laughs> See, that's, I, I spe that's the thing. I'm looking at the film going, God, who the fuck is that? Why do I know that face? Yeah, yes, and yeah. Casper, you're quite right there in the chat. Casey Affleck's in it too. Yeah, oh, an abominable human being. Yep. I mean, how everyone's he's still in getting, it. Like, yeah, yeah, I know, Pete. But, but, mm, him. No. Maybe this is oh, the whole. Wait. This is this was actually a euphemism or a metaphor for like what actually happened is it's like they built the town too quickly and they tried to do all of this stuff too quickly because they were racing against the clock and they didn't have time to think about the consequences of their actions and they shot the film all within fifty three days and they just put actors in and they didn't think about the consequences of their action. Oh, wow. racing against the clock. They it took them three years to make this fucking bomb. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I did, yeah. Like, I mean, you know, yeah. sure, this movie is is not exactly. I wouldn't call it a bomb. I think it's a very successful yeah. movie, but but fuck, it's two hours too long. Oh, it's, <laughs> I, I would say it's it, it's an hour and a bit too long. Yeah, I don't know that it's two hours too long. Like, I think there's there's a real solid two hour movie in it. But well, someone that I know was looking for like what time should I go pee in like Oppenheimer, and I had to raise the comment like if they've started the nuclear bomb countdown, don't go. But any other time, you could take five to you could do a number two. Like I think that's fine, <laughs> and you could come back and be like, where are we now? It's like oh, Oppenheimer's having a confliction or fucking someone. He shouldn't. Yeah, you could you can definitely go out in the sex scene, um, Peter. Yeah. You were going to say something. Talk about the female characters in Barbie. Um, Sorry, were there? <laughs> yes, I'd love to. I would love to. <laughs> Before we get to that, let's talk about the female yeah, characters yeah. in Oppenheimer because there were three with more than one line. Um, yeah. Of those, one of them had about three lines and just existed to be like, they were female scientists too. Um, one of them was naked for most of her lines. Mm -hmm. um, Good old and, Florence. Oh, and, man, I really the, question her taking that role, man. <laughs> uh, and the third one had mm. a little bit more to do, but just in like a very like all fragile, broken woman way that was like a yeah. little bit irritating. And occasionally um, she got to be, you know, have a bit of a bit of oomph and a bit of power. But by that time, you're two and three quarter hours into the film. Yeah. Um, yeah. Guess like, what? Look, none, of those, is... none of those women spoke to each other. Oh, no, no it definitely does not pass a vector <laughs> test in any way, shape, or form. Um, not that that's the only, you know, test no. that we can use to judge, but, you know, it's. <laughs> didn't even get close. Um, but, it, yeah, I, I know that it's, you know, part it is a historical thing and it, we've made in a time where maybe women weren't given much to do or say, um, but, like, Jesus Christ, come on. Yeah. 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 So Casper is asking, you know, is Florence Pugh Florence good film. in it? No. Uh, Sorry. Uh, Florence Pugh is always great. Um I just, Florence, they didn't Florence give her anything to do to be good. Yeah, it yeah. didn't give her a lot to work with. And, and in fearless, fearless in this film, I think. Yeah, but um, also, what a what a shit fucking role to be given of like, hey, yeah. by the way, you're gonna have a sex scene that is deeply unsexy, another sex scene that's deeply unsexy. Um, you're gonna be the reason for the famous line that Oppenheimer <laughs> is super well known for in a really <laughs> awkward use of Sanskrit. Context. Possibly. Yeah, yeah. And what? most of the time, you're going to be sitting there naked. Cool. Yeah. And, and you're then depressed. you just your your not the finest role. Your character arc is is going to just spiral into 
troubling stereotype of a troubled woman. Um, I feel and- I feel that it's uh, you know, Florence Pugh in this is like after because you would have shot this at the same time. What was the other one that she was in recently? The um, the other desert science experiment. Oh, um, um, uh, don't worry, darling. Thank you. Don't worry, darling. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, I look at I I've seen both of these films like Oppenheimer and Don't Worry, Darling, and I'm like, that's Florence Pugh having the worst time in film. Yeah. Because it's like that's a that's a strange combination to be shooting at the same time, to be honest. Yeah. And yeah. and didn't have a particularly good time on either of them, from what I can tell. No, um, no wonder she turned up to the premiere in Khan just and going, Whatever guys. I've had, yeah. had my time, it's fun. I, anyway. I, I just want uh, to have we, a quick we, look at the IMDB we, and realize that it is literally all dudes and then Emily Blunt up near the top as and you're like, Wow. It's mm-hmm. just. Um, should we look? Have you got any other strong feelings on this? Because I know that we're about halfway through, and I think there's more to talk about in the Barbie section, and I want to get there. So I'm happy to. Well, I've, I've expressed my to, strong to, feelings about to me. rate this one and and go on and you know you're right there. Mm, you me, I can start. I'm ready to start. I'm going to go 65. 65 for Oppenheimer. It's okay. very long, and I was quite mm. bored, and it's a bit like Titanic. You know, sure, watch it for the giant bomb blast, and you can get a bit out of it if you feel like, but. Holy shit! All I learned about this, in a historical sense, was that uh, sad boy fucks. Mm. That, yeah. That's it. All right. Yeah, Peter. I mean, look, it's such a weird one for me to rate because I knew I wouldn't like it, and I didn't want yeah. to see it. Um, and right. I know that I don't like the work of the director, so it, it, it seems uncharitable to be like zero points. Mille <laughs> um, <laughs> points. Uh, but look, I would say there were, you know. Obviously, technically, like, you know, the, the filmmaking is great. The performances from most of the cast are fantastic. The makeup, the ageing makeup is is really, I thought, like, seamless and only distracting in the way that they're very kind of well-known people and you're like, oh, he looks old. Um, um, you know, lo- lots of good things to say about it on a technical basis. Um, mm. Everything that I dislike about Nolan films was also present, you know, and deliberately confusing timeline jumps. Um, there was like a bit of weirdness where some stuff was in black and white, but it didn't really make sense which stuff was in yeah. black and white and which stuff this wasn't is, in black and white. When you said um, the, the filmmaking was good, I was actually going to argue with that point because I was like, actually, I think it's fucking messy. And some I, I, elements of the filmmaking was yeah. good, but, but, but the stuff that I expected to be what I dislike about Nolan's signature style, um, which is deliberately confusing timelines um, was was all there. And this is the black and white thing. You would use something like that if you are jumping around in time to signal to the audience that, like, okay, this is this timeline that's black mm. and white and this is this timeline that's colour, but that wasn't how it was used. Like, it seemed like a little bit random and confusing. No, um, it, was, it was Robert Downey Jr. character's perspective was, so his telling of what was happening afterwards was all the black and white stuff. Is that all the black and white stuff? Yeah, it was his perspective on what was happening afterwards was everything that was in black and white. Right. Uh, See, I, I got really, because there were two that. different shades of black and white. Like there, <laughs> there, there was there was a high contrast and a mid contrast black and white. And I'm like, it's, what the fuck are we doing here? I did not like, notice that. Yeah, no, I, I, I was like, like. The Robert Downey Jr. stuff wasn't all in black and white, was it? No. No, um, because there were parts of it that were from Oppenheimer's perspective that he was a part of, and then his retelling of what was happening afterwards was in Oh, you got so much more out of this than I did, you. Oh, I, I, would have to, I would have to watch it again to confirm that. And I'm not going I, to. <laughs> and this is why, no, this is why, then, fine. This is why Christopher Nolan is a genius. He's just <laughs> got so many levels and shit. Like, oh, God. What's your number? So in conclusion, I honestly don't know what number to give it because <laughs> because I didn't enjoy myself. Well, um, what's the atomic I, number of uranium? Didn't think it was oh, it's like 200 and something. terrible movie. Mm. Um, so I thought, what, like 58? Because okay. mm. I the just didn't have fun and I thought, like, it's, is... it's Thanks, well, Cass, unless, I knew it was unless, 200 and something. <laughs> unless well you're interested, unless you're interested in in the life and science of Oppenheimer, like this movie is 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 going to be a slog to get through. Yeah. Even if you love Nolan, this movie is going to be a slog to get through. It is mostly dialogue 
recounting historical stuff and if yeah. you're really interested in that then you're probably going to really like the film to be honest because you know i think that they probably recounted from oppenheimer's particular perspective what was you know going on with obvious emissions that jill's already pointed out i don't know what else to say about it yeah i'm with you p like i enjoyed the the filmmaking aspect of it some points of the story I'm interested in. I don't mind a dialogue heavy movie. It held my attention the whole way through, although I was a little bit hungover from Barbie the night before, so I didn't <laughs> close my eyes for a little bit. But it was only when our <laughs> DJ was talking, so it was all right. <laughs> um, <laughs> but by that last hour, my bladder was screaming. And so yeah. I was just like, just finish. Um, but there were just too many things that really disappointed me. And it was all of those points that I made earlier and just the unnecessary amounts of sex and like having to go into depth about somebody's relationship that really didn't have any effect on the story and what his career was. Uh, so I'm like, mm, do we need to go into all of the detail when recounting someone's story when you're so very obviously focused on what their main point was, you know? So... Mm -hmm. I'm going to go with a 60 because I didn't hate it, but I didn't connect with it. Okay. Um, I personally, I'm, I'm, I started out as a Nolan fan and then have fallen out of love with him. Mm. Um, I find his stuff progressively more and more self-indulgent. <clears throat> and this is the one that I actually thought he'd, he'd hit his, um, his Peter Jackson King Kong. Like, this is the one oh, where no. somebody needed to tell him, fucking <laughs> get to the fucking monkey, man. Um, it's too long. From the point that you hit the, the actual bomb, there's an, a solid hour and a bit more of film that really doesn't need to be there. Um, and it's like, okay, there's some good dialogue, but it's sort of, and I mean, if it, it, the first two hours, it fucking clips along at a pace. And it's mm. like it really is really pacey. But then once you've lost that pace, it's just tedious as shit. Um, and the whole kind of reveal of the villain in Act 3 felt really cheesy. <laughs> I was like, he may have may as well have fucking started twirling his moustache. <laughs> <clears throat> so, yeah, I, for me, it's a, it's a eh, 62 um it was very pretty i guess but also i didn't even care that much about the visuals of it like i thought the it it it's not that amazing like it was it was a fine yeah, film i guess it was like a weird creative choice that was happening in the last hour and i'm like where was this the whole movie you guys know mm. what I'm talking about? Who's having like those i don't know emotional panic attacks or something and they're like how do we show that yeah Oh, the, 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 yeah, that yeah. Was, yeah, that was a thing. Yeah. Um, just, just, just to, hmm. Peter? I was going to say, just to um, prove that, that everybody has a different experience in, in different movies, um, we do have uh, someone in the chat, I'm clad M N M M N M yeah. M N M um, who actually really loved it. And has given yeah. it a 98, um, uh, a masterclass on how to keep you on the edge of the, uh, on edge, even though it was a dialogue different film. Um, so, yeah. yeah. I look, I, mean, I, 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 have, I, mean, I, I was, I was still captivated, even though it was fully dialogue. So, I yeah. mean, all I of your reviews get taken into ours and we factor it up. So, yeah, it's, we do. It's not going to be a shit can, don't worry. <laughs> yeah. And and absolutely, like the first two thirds of the film, I think, is a masterclass in in keeping you on edge. It's just the last hour that goes to hell. Right. So let's. That's jump. it for the Oppenheimer. Yes. And um, yeah, now what are we going to do? It's time to get on to to fill yourselves with Kennedy. Oh. <laughs> Can you feel the Kennedy? I am so excited for this. Can you? So feel we're going to have. We're going to have a quick, very pink trailer, and yep. then we'll be back to talk about Barbie. 
Hey, Barbie. Can I come to your house tonight? Sure. I don't have anything big planned, just a giant blowout party with all the Barbies and plant choreography and a bespoke song. You should stop by. So cool. You can find me under the lights, diamonds under my eyes. This is the best day ever. It is the best day ever. So is yesterday, and so is tomorrow, and every day from now until forever. Yes. You guys ever think about dying? When my heart breaks Some things have been happening that might be related When my world shakes Cold shower Ooh. Falling off my roof ah! And my heels are on the ground <gasps> Flat feet! What do I have to do? You have to go to the real world you can go back to your regular life, or you can know the truth about the universe. The choice is now yours. The first one, the high heel. You have to want to know, okay? Do it again. Closer I am to the Closer I am to the I'm coming with you. Okay. Wow, this is the real world. <laughs> What's going on? Why are these men looking at me? Yeah, they're also staring at me. Barbie in the real world. That's impossible. If this got out, this could mean extremely weird things for our world. This would be catastrophic! We haven't played before. <laughs> okay, that's the, I think we've had enough of that trailer. It's so pink. Have we? I don't know. I was no, I happy. could keep it rolling, but it. also I'm well aware of the time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. Okay, and fine. it's Barbie. nearly three minutes of amazing pink Barbiness. It's and a Barbie we are world. Here. Um, life in plastic, it's fantastic. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, which is a song that does not appear in the film at all, apart from the end credits. Yeah, well, um, I was say, it's not the original one. So well, you know what? Mattel did originally sue Aqua back in the 90s oh. because they didn't like the the terms and the words that were used in the lyrics to describe Barbie mm. because Barbie's not a bimbo. Thank you very much. No. Ken is the bimbo. Yeah. <laughs> um, but their, their lawsuit went nowhere. They dropped it uh, and nothing ever happened. Oh, really? Yeah. And Mattel have now embraced Barbie Girl as a song. Uh, and it actually features uh, as a couple of samples in a few different tracks on the soundtrack. Hmm. Yeah, so they love Aqua now. Interesting. Patel's a doll. Who cares? Yeah. <laughs> the thing is we are going to dive headlong into just talking about all of the relevant plot points of this film. Um, yes. If you're excited to see it and you haven't seen it, maybe go and do that and then come back and yeah. listen to the rest because I just, like, I feel like it's just better to – my short review of this is that it's like an absurdist, pink, existentialist, feminist fever dream. Yeah. Um, yes, perfect. No notes. In, and in so go and way. do that and then yeah. come back and listen to us talk about the details. I'm so yeah, happy honestly, that I managed – Mm. I'm so happy that I managed to avoid like a lot of the reviews or the explanations about it. So if you haven't seen it, I recommend you go and see it and then talk about this. Yes, Adski, see it. Yes, yes. But we are saying, yes, please watch it. Like it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah our review yeah. is that it's worth. It's good. Um, well, yes. Um, it's all going to be very high, very high numbers. Weird. Weird, yeah. but great. Yeah, oh, okay. um, yeah. But I, I wrote a, a two-second review for somebody as well, and, and I yeah. said almost exactly the same things as you, Peter. Yeah. Absurdist fever dream, um, great things to say, funny, poignant, and also has a lot of insights into modern feminine pressure. <laughs> so Thank there you, you go. Queenie. Yes, very good point. Um, like, I, I honestly think there's a moment in there that I was like, oh, wow, it's, it's amazing hearing that said out loud, um, you, know, re you know, massive film about all of the bullshit pressure that is put on women to just be everything. Yeah. There was a great uh, review. I'm not even going to say, <laughs> like, great in the sense of, like, I'm laughing at you, not with you. Uh, <laughs> and it was basically, like, describe yourself in five words. And it was this review from the BBC. And it says, 
deeply bizarre and anti-man. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I'm like that's me to a T. No, <laughs> but like, but that's, like I, first I of all, it... any anti-man commentary about this film is completely. <laughs> it, there's no basis for that. Uh, understanding of this movie at no point is this movie anti-man it's anti-asshole no. it's yeah. it's anti-establishment uh it's who, who created the establishment? Horses. yeah who created yeah. the establishment though so you know if if you're finding yeah. an anti-man sentiment in this film maybe you need to look within at uh where your deep loathing is coming from there's a whole there's a whole like narrative in this about the uh, so-called suffering of man and man's <laughs> own uh identity politics that it's right is but none of this is anti-man in fact the, exactly. the movie the movie has more to say about men than it has to say about like or as much to say about men as it has to say about barbie yeah. in that sense like it's not anti anything. If you're no. if you're worried about it being anti man, then you're mm. benefiting from patriarchy too much. Yeah, which I think is also the whole the narrative movie. of the second yeah. story. Yeah, if you're threatened by this movie, then you you have uh, the wrong stakes in the game. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I like I like I don't like change. I fear change, kind of thing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. it's like wait, what? Um, yeah, I, I really respond to responded to this because I understand Barbie and Barbie's plight, and I also understand Alan and me. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> let us pull one out for Alan. Uh, Alan, the yeah. the quietly uh, queer character of this movie, I feel. Or Is what? he queer? Yeah. I'm not Let's even sure. Honest. I think he's. Just not participating he's Ken's, he's in the Ken's Ken Ken's friend. He fits it, all Ken's clothes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <clears throat> he's the only one that didn't like when Kendom was happening. He didn't want to be a part of that. Right. And I feel like it's because he doesn't vibe with that. Oh, oh also, also um, <clears throat> Magic Earring Ken. Um, Magic <laughs> Earring Ken didn't want to be a part of that. Um, <laughs> you did sugar daddy Ken. <laughs> Uh, yeah, which I, I'm not the so sure about. Queer, Daddy, but... Yeah, the quietly queer dolls of, of Barbie Land. <laughs> yeah. Um, I did look we up Magic Earring Ken. Oh, oh Magic yes, Earring so... Ken. Yeah. I was so, just going to say, can I... we have a quick check in on all of our relationships with Barbie? Oh, oh right. Oh, cool. <laughs> what do you I... want to know? Well, if it's did not guys... obvious. <laughs> did you guys play with Barbie as a child? I am. Yeah, yeah. I, I, yeah. I'm pretty sure I played with some of my friends' Barbies. Um, I had a sister, so I obviously had Barbies. And did it give you with. unrealistic unrealistic expectations of what was expected you at, of your body uh, and as a woman in society? No. <laughs> no. No. Was... You know who did that? Magazines. <laughs> <laughs> not Barbie. Well, I, I would argue that maybe it's a lot of things and that Barbie may have contributed, certainly to me. Um, my favourite Barbie was Dr. Barbie. Uh, Dr. Barbie had blue eyes and blonde hair, just like me, and uh -huh. she was a doctor. Uh, I looked her up recently. Of course she was an OBGYN because what other doctor would Barbie be? <laughs> I mean, Barbie could be many different doctors. Uh, and I, I feel like, Any you know, eight-year-old Peter who was playing with Dr. Barbie would be very, very confused now because she was very convinced that she was going to be a doctor, which was why Dr. Barbie was her favourite Barbie. And she had all the little things, like a tiny little stethoscope and a tiny little clipboard. Like, mm -hmm. yeah, you she put was my very favourite. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, my only experience of Barbies was a friend, uh, like a friend's sister. And I do remember her having the one that I'm pretty sure became Weird Barbie because um, <laughs> it was the hair growing one and it was the one oh. where you could like cut the hair, do a new hairstyle yeah. and then pull the hair out. And, mm. yeah, she she basically just grabbed the hair, reefed it and cut it all off and said, why doesn't it work? <laughs> and so I just, I just yeah. love the fact that they when they refer to Weird Barbie, they just say because she was played with too much. Like yeah. too hard, yes. Mm. Yeah, but yeah. honestly, every time I went to the Barbie box, they were all in the splits. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> they are always in the splits. <laughs> you gotta pull their dresses down. Yeah. Very unbecoming. <laughs> like, I always I love that stuff with Kate McKinnon though, where she's just talking and her legs up here. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> so good. Oh, dear. Oh, so man. yeah, I I mean no. I, I'm sorry to say, or happy to say, we weren't given unrealistic expectations of uh, um, our body or women's bodies by Barbie. I do remember as a young person probably trying to take the clothes off Barbie to see what was underneath and going, oh. So, and then finding exactly what they found in the, in the movie, which was like, I have nothing going on. I don't even yeah. know what I'm doing. <laughs> like, you know, Ken and Barbie, what are you going to do if you stay over tonight? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's like Barbie is the most unsexualized doll by children because she doesn't have the parts. It's nope. outside people. I don't want to say men. It's not anti men, but like other people are putting expectations on this doll, not children. But I mean, I didn't not- take the- Ken's pants off and wonder where his dick was. I didn't. That wasn't a thought that ever crossed my mind. Did I'm you like, know oh, everybody's a nub <laughs> down there. <laughs> Everyone's got a beige blob. <laughs> you know what? That's a, that's, that's um, a good cool oh, I still think of my friends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, but the, the design for the original Barbie um, was kind of a little bit inspired by slash directly copied off a, a doll that was originally a, a sex um, yes. character. Oh. So, so not as far-fetched as you may think. Um <laughs> Actually, yeah. to the point where they actually got sued um, initially was, and I think ended up buying German out doll? that, yeah, a German doll. Um, that if, was... if you're wanting to know the actual, the, the real history of the Barbie doll, there's a couple of documentaries around, but one of them uh, is The Toys That Made Us on Netflix and that's really good. It does cover a lot of the history of, of mm-hmm. yeah, that somebody basically... Um, the character that we meet later in the film um, was traveling and saw this doll and went, Oh yeah, I could, that's, that's amazing. We can do stuff with that. I think what I really did like one of the, one of the things I liked about this film was the way, because when they first released it, they're making a Barbie film. I was like, yeah, but like, you know, how (laughs) are we going to do this without just being deeply problematic in the modern world? Um, I really enjoyed how they managed to point out everything that is actually damaging about mm. Barbie and they actually used the young character um, mm. to to do that. Uh, that was, you know, I because I, I, I honestly didn't believe that they could kind of make this film while acknowledging all of the reasons that I wasn't excited about a Barbie film when I first <laughs> heard about it. Mm. Um, yeah, yeah. I do feel like it's very cleverly written to to make those acknowledgements, but also at the same time still have a positive message around the doll's existence and and what it kind of has done in retrospect. Like, I mean, you have to take both sides of it. You know, there was all this feminist progression, but at the the cost of the male gaze, I suppose. But that's the contradiction of being hyper feminine is that, um, you know, it can be interpreted as a submission to male gaze and patriarchal oppression and stuff. But at the same time, it's also subversive because it deals in so much joy and empowerment for women that, you know, it's, it's quite a juxtaposition. And I think it does a really good job of balancing that by saying, what, this is what the Barbies believe they are. Yeah. You know, this is this is in Barbie Land. They believe that they are empowering, that they are yeah. everything, that they are teaching the world the best possible world that it can be, and that's what their job is. Yeah, they, and the they intention understand. that they were created with. Yeah, it's hmm. just the fact that they have to intersect with the real world that it becomes a yeah. problem. And <laughs> I, 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 I enjoyed the intersection with the real world a great deal. <laughs> Um, Look, Ken was, learning was, about the patriarchy. Oh my god! It, it was always a strange one to sort of figure out. Okay, what are you going to do about this? Like, what kind? How are you going to get all these things into one movie? Which, like, at least they they were understanding enough to just sort of go, no, no, it's everything. It's all of that. It can be that because it's all up. It's all up to your own interpretation about mm. what you want to take away from it, which I thought was really good. Like, much like. The Lego movie had that distinction between 
the Lego world and the real world. And then it went, you know, like at the end there, you went into this whole other thing of like, oh, wow, okay, what am I watching? I like that it's, that it started, the Barbie movie starts with that kind of thing. Like, you know, the, the bit with the Lego movie got to the end of it and you're like, oh, that's interesting. But you went there. This one just kind of goes, no, no, we're going there straight away. And then we're just going to let and see what happens in that same kind of vein. And I cannot believe that Mattel agreed to be represented in such a way. And uh, I'm, weirdly, I'm very uh, happy that they did. Yeah, weirdly, Will Ferrell was an antagonist in both of those films. Yeah, I know. <laughs> that, was, that was a weird <laughs> casting choice. <laughs> when he's just reprising have... his role as Lord Business. <laughs> yes. <laughs> President <definitely>. Business. <laughs> I did have I do... that thought. Yeah, sorry. I do enjoy that. You know, the the bad guys in this movie weren't evil; they're just no. ridiculous. And yeah. like any of the evil things in this movie were just silly and ridiculous. And like you could have a laugh at it and poke fun, the, but in in seriousness, it was like being very satirical. Yeah, the hmm. the evil I like in this, this the evil in Barbie was were ideas, were bad ideas. Uh, which mm. corrupted people who generally didn't mm. have any better way of expressing what they were doing. And I, that's what I really kind of liked about it. It's like, oh, it's anti-men. It's not anti-men. It's anti the structures that make men dickheads. You know? Yes. It's toxic um, masculinity. Yeah, absolutely. And it's it, it went on that qu quite nice way of explaining that in a very funny and lighthearted way where it didn't have to, like if you're watching it and paying attention, you didn't. It didn't have to be explained because you're like, "Oh yeah, right. I see where this has all gone wrong. Like <laughs> yes. this has gone wrong because you've done too much of this because you're having problems dealing with your own emotions. And perhaps if you did some inward reflection to figure out why that's so bad for you and not putting everything yes. on other people to solve, that might be a bit. Ah, oh, okay. But right, also, yep. it is smart enough to also go there are two parts to the to the story. And yeah. even at a certain point, Barbie goes, actually, I realise I haven't been, you know, treating you as a, a, a person. And, mm -hmm. and yeah. that is an important thing to see two sides of that argument and go, n not that every fucking story needs to have two sides, I know. But um, I did think it was really important for Barbie to, to have that moment to go, actually... We, we're both we've both got to learn yeah i mean she's been living in this idyllic world where you know everything is perfect and she strives on being perfection and you know she has to take a look and say oh look maybe i took it all for granted and hmm. yeah that's that's her humanity she learns to become human yeah yeah peter you've been very quiet well it is a lot it's just a lot. It I mean, we have limited time, yeah, and it's it's true. hard to kind of choose which which bit to to go at. But it's just okay. Hard, isn't it? Did you like? Peter, did you like wait, the pit? Peter? Did you enjoy the mini musical in the middle of the film? I enjoyed the mini musical <laughs> so <laughs> much, so much. Like, I want to live I'm in just the mini can. musical. Yeah. I've had that song in my head for four days straight. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I will say that I think Margot Robbie was spectacular, um, but but just by the design of the plot, Ryan Gosling had a lot more to do, um, and he, he 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 did it really well. Yeah, I've never really enjoyed Ryan Gosling as an actor, Me. or purposely sought out movies that he starred in. Uh, so I can't really say I've watched a, a great deal of his films, but just to see the joy that he had whilst being so method in his canness, uh, it, unhinged and silly and just uh, living for it, I, I can't get over that performance. I and I'll be very think. disappointed if, like, uh, I'm just Ken is not nominated for oh, God, a, yeah. an Oscar. I want that I, song. I, I heard, <laughs> Best a song. Beautiful in the film. story about how he got the role. Um, <laughs> that Greta Gerwig had basically always wanted him for it. Yeah. Called him, and while he was there, he'd seen a Ken face down His in the mud. His daughter's Ken doll yes. in the mud. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and just said, "I want to tell that guy's story." Yeah, and I was like, <laughs> it, "Yeah." It is such, like, it is so weird that people are coming out and saying, like, it's anti-man because 
really like the the plot kind of explores that the Cairns were kind of a bit oppressed in the kind of aspirational yeah. um, matriarchy that that Barbie Land yeah. was at the beginning There's of the so film. There's no upfront about it being a reversal of our world, so I don't yeah. understand how. I mean, so does that mean that our world is anti-women because it sure feels like? Well, it. that's exactly what I was getting at. Like, <laughs> e- even even to the end, when all of the Barbies accepted that actually, yes, maybe they should stop completely oppressing the Kens. When it came to actually, yeah. oh, can we like have a role in par- in government? Like, oh, no, no, no. Well, you know, you can only <laughs> you give them so much right culture. now. You, you've got to work up to that. I'm like, yes, that's yeah. exactly how it's, it's <laughs> like, very oh, self-aware. We're not ready for that yet. I mean, I love it. I love it too. The way that it just helped to do all that through a lot of jokes. Like, I did like it when they came out into the real world and they looked up at the billboard. They went, "Oh, look, the Supreme Court justices." <laughs> <laughs> I know. It was a beauty pageant. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's, like, so like, that's amazing. You know. Oh, when Margot, um, uh, when when Barbie's trying to you know, figure out what she feels about the way people are looking at her and, and mm. like, and, oh, and, yeah. and it is really I, enjoying I seem the attention. to be conscious of myself. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, yeah, it's like, you know, people look, but there's nothing violent about it. She's like, oh, it's violent for me. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 enjoying it. Fantastic. And you know, the beautiful... like, I feel empowered by just walking around. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody asked me for the time. Yes. <gasps> you respect me. <laughs> So oh there, are, there is there is so much going on. It, it really kind of needs more than one watch because it's it not does. just yeah. um, it's not just a f- feminist plot. Um, it's a lot more than that. Um, it's got some pretty deep existentialist shit in there as well. Oh, yeah. um, it is it is completely absurd, which I love personally. Um, mm. And and it's imperfect as well. You know, I mean the the, the Mattel part of the plot kind of just kind of fizzles out at the end. You kind of wonder what those guys were even doing in there in the first place except to be Mattel. <laughs> what were um, they you have to kind of acknowledge that, that, you know, capitalism is is still pretty bad and yes, this movie could do a lot of things but it couldn't be anti-capitalist by the nature of, of what it is. Um, <laughs> is it intersectional femina- feminism? No. It had some decent representation. Um, but it's still not coming from that lens. So no, nothing can cover no. off everything. And I'm sure, not saying that I'm I mad mean, at it for that. But Look, I was thinking about this movie in terms of like we've had different uh, expressions of uh, body type in the movie mm-hmm. and I mm-hmm. love that that was covered. We had disabled dolls and we had uh, a larger dolls. Larger size, size dolls. dolls. Yeah. But then I was thinking, well, there wasn't a lot of gender expression. But the more that I think about it, the more of I think of the exploration of hyperfemininity as a gender expression. And it's antithesis to like hegemonic femininity, which is like, you know, uh, the expression of femininity that re- uh, reinforces traditional gender roles of like being a mother and staying at home and not having a job and looking after a husband where like the hyperfem Barbie is the complete opposite of that. She's completely career driven and um, you know, she isn't married and she doesn't have children. So like looking at that exploration of, of gender expression and also seeing how that has bled into our world as well and the amount of people that are embracing pink and going oh, yeah. to Barbie screenings in pink and not just women but men too and everybody just em- embracing that form of gender expression. So, no, I don't – it's not perfect in that it doesn't <coughs> encompass all expressions of gender, but I think it was primarily focusing on one part. Sure. And I love that it's encouraged people to go to see it and make up their own minds or not even there's like, there's like a zeitgeist going in. There's like, wow, are you going to go see Barbie? No, I'm not going to go see Barbie. It's like, maybe I want to go see Barbie. Maybe I want to find out what all the fuss is about. Maybe I want to find oh, this is a weird film. This is not what I expected. From Look, I film. have heard secondhand from, from friends saying they've come out of the movie and a girl dressed as Barbie that went to go and see it came out and she overheard her saying, I didn't like it. So, I mean, not everybody yeah. is, is understanding what they're going in to see and maybe yeah. it isn't for everyone even if they do think they are into it. 
it is but, very likely not to be for everyone because mm. it is a lot. And if you don't get a kick out of weird, absurdist shit, you're yeah. going to struggle. And I that mean, there, there just was is an what there was an eight-year-old mm-hmm. boy in the screening near me that did not enjoy the film at all. <laughs> and I was just yeah. kind of like, yeah, not but your dad's... Ten moments. But, but your dad's loving it, your mum's <laughs> laughing, and your little sister, who's also there, she's deeply involved. So yeah. Like, yeah. perhaps, son, this isn't a movie for you, and that's no. okay. Yeah. I you had know. the experience of walking into a packed movie theatre as a 45-year-old man and sitting by myself... Um, in amongst some teenage girls on that side and a nice couple on that side. And I felt like, absolutely, I'm in the right place, which admittedly is also just being a man. Um, But (laughs) I I was like, this is a totally fine thing for anyone to watch because whilst, and I have heard some criticism about it that it um, some of the jokes are not particularly kid-friendly, and therefore, like the whole, I'm going to beat you off. Um, <laughs> yeah, okay, but the ones okay. that aren't kid friendly but, are going to go over their heads. But, exactly. but the rest of the plot is also going to go over their heads. It's really the not the entendres that you are uh, feeling that seem to be double. <laughs> I'm not <laughs> be understood by the children. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, look, I was one of the only people who laughed when they made that Zack Snyder. Okay, oh, I, God, God, so fun, man. Man. I was so laughing, so going, ah, and everyone else in the cinema was like, I don't get it. I'm like, oh, yeah, no, I don't care, whatever. Yeah, <laughs> like, me too. Jesus, okay, that's fine. And I, I was also one of the that. people laughing the hardest when fucking John Cena showed up. Oh my oh. god! Oh my god! John Cena, mermaid Barbie, Ken. Like, what the <laughs> fuck? That was hi, funny. Barbie. That was the funny. I see. I see that, Peter. Some, some, some people <laughs> didn't want to see a feminist. Like, you're a feminist. Why would you watch a stupid? I, I've Barbie had to movie? talk people around who were like, didn't watch wow. anything to do with it. Why would you see a Barbie movie? Like, I'm you, a feminist. Why would you, you know do that? Like, no, no. This is for you. This is I the really, film for you. They're your exact I really, target I really, audience. I really love that because it's a real good, it's a real good subversion. Like sometimes you go to it's like people are like, I won't see a movie on a principle based on a thing that I don't want to support something like that. And I'm like, well, okay, I can see that, but I'm telling you that that's a like a bad reason to say no to something. I mean, at least try it. You could get halfway through it and like, actually, this feminism is terrible. I'm like, well, that's good, but it's going to help some other people. Yeah. You know. Mm. It's not all bad. I also I laughed it's... quite heartily at the uh, Mattel uh, joke at the end there where Will Ferrell was about to launch into a diatribe about how we can't move and be progressive like the Barbies have decided to become until the <laughs> drone behind them was like, no, that's going to be profitable. It's like, excellent, let's, we're going this way, no problem, let's go do that. And I was like, well, there you go. You know. Yeah, and it's not difficult feminism. It's it's entry level no. feminism, oh, like primarily like like rich white lady feminism, which is why I said it's not like super intersectional. Um, but but yeah. you know, if people need an entry into feminism, it's it's a fun one. I mean, look, yeah. I really like the little. There's that tiny story in the in in there that's underlying, which is the a very angry young girl who hates Barbie and everything she represents because it is too silly in her mind learns that it's okay to like barbie she she, she doesn't think that it's silly she thinks that it's damaging and and she's right like everything that she says to barbie that makes her cry is 100 percent correct which is what i loved about that moment she's like okay somebody has said all of the things that i wanted to say and now we can like you know move on from that because i think they had to have that voice in there they had to have that in there um, to to say so many of those things. Oh yeah, I mean you have to acknowledge the way you know most people feel about Barbie as a feminist icon is that it's very split and yeah. and yeah. the other and it person has to come from the mouths of a Gen Z babe. <laughs> yeah. But also you had to have the 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 um, thing come out of the mother who was the real world woman who is living in the real world who has one of the speeches and it, I mean, it becomes a plot point speech, but that fucking that just speech me. made me cry. Like that was yeah. the first point that I cried in that movie was her whole speech because it is so accurate. Yeah. Yeah. I love American Ferrara a lot. And I think that she did yeah. a lovely I job. Really feel like this movie should be like a part of a societal curriculum for people to, to watch, to just understand like, what the other person is going through, you know? 
I think it yeah. currently is part of a societal curriculum because they're <laughs> going to see it, which is. I really just hope good. they're taking away from it what we want them to take away. You know, and there will be, see, this is what I think I really love about it. The more people see it, the more people are discussing about it, the more people it will, it, you'll get to, to get eyeballs on it and the more people will have a moment and go, oh, okay, this is great. Like, I mean, I, I watched Oppenheimer and we talked about that and I don't think I came away from that going, that's going to change someone's mind about nuclear energy. Whereas I say <laughs> anyone who goes and sees Barbie <laughs> is going to be like, hang on a second. Maybe I have to be less Ken and more Barbie, <laughs> you know. About if I'm things. being Barbie, I should also treat all of the people around me like full humans. Yeah, As exactly. opposed to the way she was treating Ken at the beginning, which is not yeah. a way to, nice way to treat I do. Anyone. Like, I did go and see, and yeah. I do feel like I need to go and get a flat screen TV, some brewskis, and maybe a <laughs> full drive truck. Dion's yeah. uh, Mojo Dojo Casa House. <laughs> My Mojo, Mo, Mojo Dojo Casa House. And I also have a, a, a with flat screens need. with horses. Yeah, a real need to purchase a big fl furry fluffy coat, which I probably can get from Mattel for, you know, twenty nine ninety five. Absolutely. Uh, at some point. I, just, I fucking... just on all of the levels, you know, Ken and Mojo Dojo Casa House and, <laughs> and his entire, his entire um, arc, I really yeah. like of all of the levels that it's hit, it's also managed to hit that level of like, if you're a guy who feels like you've been friend zoned, like Ugh. your solution isn't to continue to obsess with the woman who doesn't want to be with you, is to like think about yourself and think about how you can become your own person and make yourself mm. happy. Like mm. it just works on so many levels. It certainly yeah. Yeah. does. Yes. yes. Perhaps if you've invested too much into some other person, you've neglected some of your own identity and that could be yeah. part of your oh <laughs> Yes, and, and and maybe if you if you are going around making your own Mojo Dojo Casa house and and breaking the the entire world around you because your version of patriarchy is actually destructive and not healthy for anyone, that will bleed through to the people around you and to the rest of the world. And maybe that's not a thing that we need to be having too much more of. Maybe we should, you know, all strive to be a little bit more of enough. I am Kenna. Yeah, Kenna. <laughs> <laughs> I love. Yeah, it's. It, look, it's a great film, and there's so many, so many things like to to go through it. I feel like it could all almost become a sort of a cult film. You would watch Barbie once every couple of years to just remind yourself of the whole sort of thing. Or if you would walk into a room and someone's like, "What are you doing?" It's like, "I'm watching Barbie." I'm like, "Totally understandable. Carry on." Yeah. You know, like what a great sort of thing and a funny ending and i'm just yeah i'm still processing a lot of it i also mm -hmm. thoroughly enjoyed how much how many of the cast of sex education showed up in this <laughs> i was yes, like holy shit they, were, they, they <laughs> went for everybody there's shooty and there's um uh oh, emma mackie emma mackie and and um the other guy whose name i can't remember um I don't remember his character name adam adam yes adam. Uh, yeah. an amazing american accent from him yeah, good uh, good point there too. Casper's asking, could you make a sequel to this? And I do not know if I wouldn't want one. Don't do it. No, no. I yeah. think it, it encapsulates itself so perfectly that you don't need a sequel. I would quite happily sure. just watch this movie until the end of eternity. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I yeah, want I, to I, live I... in the Ken musical. Like that's how much <laughs> I loved it. I don't know where you could possibly take it. I mean. <laughs> Uh, Barbie's endometriosis. Oh um, no! Like, <laughs> oh, I don't know. Like, where, where do you take oh, it? Where do you make cool. her more human? Isn't this isn't this the point that Barbie technically is in the real world now? Yeah, um, she's human now. But maybe maybe what would be the pro like, there always has to be something. I, I like I want Greta Gerwig to continue through this, and maybe Barbie has to go into the other Mattel brands and rescue them. Oh, and help God. them become something. Because I, I I would love to see He-Man with a crippling body image issue. Look, if Mattel don't make their own fucking cinematic universe after <laughs> this, <laughs> what are they even doing? <laughs> Considering they literally just shit canned their He-Man movie last week. Um, yeah. I, I don't know what they're Dumb thinking. Move. Dumb move. Yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, I, admittedly, they should can it at Netflix. So there's a possibility oh, that they may have no. just gone. Actually, we want to make that ourselves. Yeah. Could the sequel um, just be called Ken? <laughs> 
and you would watch Barbie and Ken, and then it's Ken's journey of self discovery to find yeah. an identity that's not linked to Barbie, but Barbie sure. is definitely in it. I'd watch more Ken stuff. I love sure. it's a musical. Kens. You know what? No, I want to see a buddy road trip comedy that is Ken and Ken Alan. and Alan. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and them coming across everything. That'd be great. I no, I not... want I want Ryan Ken and Simu Ken to to have a oh, buddy yeah. pop thing. Good job, <laughs> guys. Yes. <laughs> um, I, I also just want to point out I, I did look up Magic Earring Ken um, mm. who was, yes, discontinued after there was a lot of put pressure back that he appeared to be the gay Ken but also <laughs> that wasn't the main reason that people were concerned it was because his necklace looked like a cock ring Great <laughs> <laughs> It was intended to be an earring roughly of the right size for a child Yes, but I'm sure the conservatives like at working at Mattel didn't know what they were making. I mean, no. yeah. Look, a lot <laughs> of a lot of uh, I it unlocked a few memories for me because I'm reasonably sure either we or one of our friends had that growing up skipper. Um, oh yeah, I the, the breast that. one. Yeah, yeah, me too. Um, we had a midge with the babies. Mm -hmm. um, so <laughs> wow. Yeah. Um, the growing hair one. Have, yep. like the one with the long hair so yeah 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 i had a I few just... of those barbies that margot was dressing as on the press tour so i was very excited to see those looks because i was like i had that one did we did we rate this film online? i don't think we actually got to rate we it. haven't rated we haven't it yet, though, but we should uh, i also do just want to call out before we rate it um the i loved the the musical narration um mm. That, mm. that like starts out and you think it's kind of diegetic music and it's just going on in the background and then it starts commenting on yeah, what's no, happening. Yeah, it was Lizzo. And you're like, it was Lizzo, by the way. I know, and it was amazing. <laughs> and, but then it also happened when it became the Ken world. And I was yeah. like, oh, that's fucking clever. I yeah. love that one. That was great. That was like, K is for death. And I was like, wait, what? <laughs> 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 oh, I'm I also up. really like the moment where they pointed out that um, if they wanted um, to make the point about like Barbie not being stereotypically typically pretty anymore, then they shouldn't have cast Margot Robbie. Yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> yes, and, exactly. and the fact that they managed to get that into the narration makes it just <laughs> perfect. Yeah, I mean, I, 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 you need to be pointed out. Thanks for that. Yeah, I, I like the joke about the flat feet, and everyone started going. <laughs> <laughs> it was just very fun. Um, all right, good. I'm going to go very quickly. Uh, Ninety. I love Barbie. Barbie was great. Hey. It's fun and also deeply weird and disturbing. But I knew it that as soon as it had the 2000 and uh, sorry, the 2001 opening. Oh. That I, and, and and it was just the little girls destroying their baby dolls. I love that on the rocks. I was like, oh, I'm here for what's going now. Like, I don't I don't care where this goes. This is definitely not what I thought it would be, and I'm down for it. So mm. it hit me. Yep, love that. And and the fact that that was so much better in the film than in the trailer. I was like, fuck yep. yes. Um, I'm I, I think it, for me it's a ninety five. I fucking I like. It was so enjoyable. I loved the um, the dedication to the style, the, mm -hmm. the whole plasticky cardboard kind of handmade, like, f okay, for a film, and I've seen some of the behind-the-scenes stuff um, of, like, how they were making the, the car driveling across the thing where they actually had built scenery that, that cycled backwards and forwards. It wasn't CGI. I was like, holy fuck, this was more artisanal and handmade than Oppenheimer. So, oh, yes. Um, did you know the story that they, they used all the pink? I do. The world ran out of pink paint. Because um, of Barbie. Too much pink. Yeah. So good. I can love the shit out of it and really w just came out of it feeling so much better about the world <laughs> and going, this is good. There is yeah. good out there. And that's not what I got out of the other film. No. No. Now, it, is it stereotypical Jill or industry Barbie who wants to go next? Pete, do you want to go? I haven't decided. Jill should go while I decide. All right, I'll go. I'll go. I'm going 98 because oh, I, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it so much. I laughed at everything. I cried at everything. The, the Like Quinny said, the scenery... The costumes, they had 11 weeks to costume this film. 
So they were making stuff. Holy shit. All the supplemental costumes were Chanel. Uh, like they went so far out. Like the props that were all like plasticky, mm-hmm. like just the the matte paintings for the backgrounds, like everything was just beautiful. I thought the story was amazing. I loved that like all of the weird moments where the Barbies and Kens are doing stuff felt exactly like how I used to play with Barbie. Like there was none of this what are you doing today, Barbie? Oh, nothing. It was weird shit like, oh, the Kens are doing this and we've got to go and stop them. So let's all get in the Barbie van and we're going to go undercover and we're going to do this shit. And then like the Kens go, oh, yeah, man, I'm going to do this. This is so cool. Yeah, I love horses and like shit like that. (laughs) That was exactly how I paid Barbies. Like, so for me, 10 out of 10, no notes. I'm giving it a 98 because there was maybe like a moment where it just kind of dulled a little bit, but Otherwise, I'm going to watch this movie forever on repeat. <laughs> I'm definitely going to watch it again because um, I think a second what the I don't think that you'll see everything in your first watching of this anyway. Um, yeah. I, I did think, like I said, I, I you know it's not perfect, but you can't expect many things to be perfect except Ted Lasso. Um, <laughs> And even then, you still had notes about Ted Lasso. Uh, but following the first season, following the first season, I, okay, I did have notes. okay, okay, okay. And we we haven't actually talked. I don't know if we will ever talk about the final season and the redemption mm. arc. Um, but I have thoughts about that. Um, I think it's I, a I did think jump. that we, there were. We're never doing. We're never revisiting the well of Ted Lasso. We're done now. It's finished. <laughs> <laughs> well, also, you August never know what my issues were. <laughs> oh, I want to know what your issues were. Anyway, please go on. Um, I, I thought that the, you know, the Mattel executives were fun but didn't actually add a lot to the plot. Like the entire movie could have easily existed without them, which yeah. which all it kind of did was just remind me about consumerism and capitalism and how that element of Barbie is never going to be good. Um, but maybe that needed to be there to remind us. Possibly. I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna d- deduct points for capitalism and give it <laughs> a ninety. Nice. Yay. Oh. Good job. Bobby. Better than Oppenheimer. <laughs> oh oh yeah. god, yeah. Yeah, and I'm sorry, Ironclad Eminem, if you're still there, and I doubt it. Um, <laughs> like it, it's important that people love the things that they love, and if you enjoyed Oppenheimer, that's that's. I'm happy for you, but. Of the two, I think this is just a it's a far more interesting, clever, handmade, care-driven film. Um, and I'm sure that there'd be people who would worked on Oppenheimer would be like, no, no, it was it was a, a thing of passion. But eh. <laughs> this one made us all smile and want to sing and dance. Yes. yes. This had more to stay, and I really want to buy an existentialism Barbie. <laughs> oh, existential and existential Barbie. thoughts of dread, Barbie. <laughs> One of my favorite moments in the movie was in a dance sequence where the two Kens kissed Ken on the cheek, and yes! obviously, obviously, kind of loses it for a second, and it's just like sweet. Yes. Yeah, I loved, I loved all of the Kens. They're so good. Just and finding themselves, yeah. twenty Kens in a circle singing. But that that moment, though. Oh, thanks. Just drown me out. There you go. Rude. <laughs> what a, like? What was great? The about, moment, like, the moment yeah. when uh, someone said, "Where do all the Kens go at night?" <laughs> and I'm like, "Oh, I can never." I'm like, "Oh shit, Kens were at the bottom of the box, babe." <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they just left. Barbies were in their bunk beds, and Kens were just at the bottom of the box. Yeah, doing splits. <laughs> Kens were a lot stiffer than Barbie was. I. Ken didn't just, have like bent arms. He was always like straight arms. The good, weird. the good thing, I think the good thing about all of the like the Ken stuff too is that in even when the Kens took over, they didn't really understand what patriarchy was. They were no! just putting out they were just putting out a, an idea of what it was. Like remember, Ken, especially the uh, Ryan Ken, this one, is his job is just beach. Like what yeah. is beach? <laughs> Beach. And in this, in this one, he came. He brought. I brought patriarchy back. It's got something to do with horses. Yeah, and... it's like when I found out it wasn't just about horses, I was lost interest. Yeah. 
<laughs> and this is part of the whole thing, which is like, you don't really know what you're all angry about, do you? It's like, nope, no, we don't know. We just feel feelings and we haven't processed them. Yeah, Ken. he just wants Bobby to love him, but he doesn't love himself. Yeah. Yeah. I also love that they, they never really followed up on the effect in the real world. Like there was like one <laughs> scene where yeah. like the real world was changing because of the the patriarchy in, in Barbie Land. Yeah. Oh, no, Joe, Joe. Call it Ken. Kendom. The, um, <laughs> Kendom. Um, but that that was kind of never revisited in the end. It was just yeah. like. <laughs> <laughs> Mojo Dojo Casa Houses are flying off the shelves. Yeah. <laughs> of course they are. Totally. I, love, I, love, I love that one. That's just, that sort of explains how dumb. Yeah, anyway, look, this whole movie is a fever dream. It's right. You're correct. It's a, it's a pink explosion of ideas and concepts and things, and it doesn't ask you to go too hard, or maybe it does ask you to go too hard. You don't really know. But at the end of it, I was like, that was great. I like it. Enjoyable. Barbie. I'd see it again. Yes. Absolutely. Or I'd see it a can. Oh, get out. Uh, uh, that's uh, enough out of you. <laughs> yes. Do you know I oh. kind of want to I oh. kind of want to watch it with the angriest dude I could find to see them just seethe with rage because they refuse to open their mind to Oh, watch it. okay. So like a, a an unfeminist man. Sure. Well, I mean, mm. no, I don't. I don't really. Know I mean, I know difference. angry dudes, but they're all quite, you know, um, normal. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> they're not women haters. I mean, I don't need that in my life. I just, I'm really mm. excited that it's making a lot of dudes angry, and I just laugh because it's a film about a Barbie. Look, yeah. my brother-in-law was very upset that I took my sister to go and see Barbie without him. Like he's like, I no. want to see it. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's that's how you should be upset about it. Like last weekend, but he was like, yeah. "You're gonna go and see it again without me." Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. But I feel wow. like it's a good instructional for any like young you girl know. growing up as well. I mean, it'd be like, hey, you know, there's plenty of movies. This is what for you've got boys. to look forward to as a woman. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Ex extreme societal pressures that go in two directions that will tear you in half anyway. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, well, speaking of extreme societal pressures that are going to tear us in half, what are we doing next month? That's a very, oh very God. good question. It's August <laughs> Which is next week. Very, very next Tuesday is the 1st of August. We need to give people homework. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Um, <laughs> my personal feeling is we should be talking about deadlock, but that's just because I've just finished watching it and I want everybody uh, to talk about it. Uh, but, oh, well, I want to talk about the show one. that I just watched exactly. <laughs> that nobody yeah, else yeah. has seen. <laughs> hey, Which Peter did one? it with Ted Lasso. Don't fucking fight me on this. <laughs> <laughs> um, I didn't say you had to watch Ted in the week, though. No, that's mm -hmm. true. There's only uh, eight episodes of Deadlock, but yes, it is. Hey, Predacang has given us a suggestion. Um, talk to me. Uh, it's a horror film. Sorry. Uh, there's good omens. Thank you, Terry. That's that's yep. a good one to think about. We're not quite sure. Uh, uh, we've still got Ted Lasso wrap up. Maybe if we're kind to Peter, it means she doesn't have to watch anything else. Oh, I don't. It. No, I don't need to do the Ted Lasso wrap up. I just have one rant, and you know, I've already done it. Yeah. Until, and that's fine. We're allowed <laughs> yeah. to do this. Uh, I'm having fun right. watching uh, Foundation, but that's a very distinct kink oh, that I don't think lot. anyone else is going to get into. Well, they've just announced their their whole production in Prague, so in support of the writer strike. So, oh, good. Uh, yeah, so maybe we won't do that till they finish that season. Um, mm. Yeah, there's, um, there's I'm, I'm not suggesting these for review, but just reminding people that Miracle Workers' uh, new season is still dropping. Um, the Bear dropped on the weekend for anybody who didn't somehow manage to watch it before that um, and is an excellent watch for a second season. Quick, quick, quick question there, Pete. Did you make it through that episode? Because you did text I us did. going, I had to turn it off for, and have a, a little anxiety. I had to calm this. down. <laughs> there's, there's one episode that I had to pause to calm down and then realise that I was 10 minutes into a 60-minute episode. Um, um, right. Yeah. I knew there was a good reason why I didn't start second season. It's not all like that, though. It's not as stressful as first season. There's a, there's um, a, it's a lot really of good TV. nice. A lot of good TV out this month uh, and some doing pretty average movies, unless you're really into the Blue Beetle or Gran Turismo or the Meg mm. 2. 
<laughs> yes. Trench trench warfare. Oh, Mariana good. trench warfare. I don't know what it is. Amazing. Remember the Meg. Anyway, we will put it out to you guys um, and Ooh. hopefully give you enough time to at least get some kind of uh, thing going on. And you will see a schedule coming out very, very shortly. Yeah. Yeah. If you're not already a uh, part of the Facebook groups, join the Facebook groups, uh, the periodic table, CP2A thread for everything else, or the Star Wars group or the DC group. And you can say that. Tell us what to do. Meg, there's lots of Meg. Okay. Shit. Okay, I've opened a, pen a Pandora's a box, I believe. Of Meg. Oh, the Meg man. I don't have time to watch the Meg on the weekend. I'm going to Bobby again. <laughs> yeah. I can't watch all of this. You know, yes. only if we can. Insert... Oh, here's your homework. Watch Oppenheimer 2. It's yeah. called The Hills Have Eyes. <laughs> yeah, if you haven't watched that horror movie, either the Wes yeah. Craven one or the Wes Craven remake, whichever you feel like. <laughs> right. Well, my loves, I, it is time for us to wrap it up. I am feeling quite uncomfortable. Um, oh. I've, I've, the, I've, I've had a bad week, and it's coming oh. back. No, um, you've got, so you've got your Barbie um, rose-colored glasses on, Quinny. I you see the world in shades of pink. Yeah, I do. I do. <laughs> yep. So thank you very much for joining us, and we will see you next week. And keep an eye out on all of our socials. Yep. Bye, Bye, Barbies. Bye, Ken. Bye, Bye Barbies. Bye, Ken. Heroes, not cooking up these heroes at my parents' restaurant now. I wanna yell at Avengers Assemble, not order up for Ethel. Yeah, we're out of cheeky now. Say I'm a frog and have her read my mind. Or Magdalena, her artifacts I find in every catch a symphony. It'll just be her and me. Call Lucky Barn and arm wrestle for hours.